repeat if you're already here recording. <laughs> Great. Did. And the over the uh, Xanarkin theme plays here too, which is great. Or someday the dream will end. Yeah. It's a great little ditty. Not about Jack and Diane. Uh, but, yeah, one of my favorite videos right now that consistently makes me laugh is the begin like the opening to that song. Uh, it has Diddy Kong just standing there in Super Smash Brothers. A poison mushroom falls out of the sky and makes him shrink it at that very moment goes little diddy <laughs> and that's, that's the end of it <laughs> a space yeah this is very uh boy they did really good in 10 2 making you hate the people who commercialized this place Why so xanarkin becomes a tourist trap basically oh good like, you know on. the most sacred holy like this is how i feel that like People must feel like the monks in Tibet when people hike their sacred trails and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, it has to be something similar where it's like, you're just, or, you know, people building Christian monuments over the old pagan ones and whatnot. Or um, like how there's a McDonald's next to Jerusalem temples or something. Yeah. But all, the, it, so what you do is, in the one chapter you do a mission where you find a bunch of monkeys and put them with their mate. Okay. And they'll have names like Sun and Moon or Fall and Spring and you're just unless you have the guide you're yeah. just looking at it and be like who goes with who? Max and Minnie go together. Of course. You know. So you breed monkeys <laughs> and that makes people go away. Oh, I remember this place. Let's play first, Blitzball. Yeah, you clear your first uh, boss. The first like ending of the chapter is in Xanarkin with a boss that I ended up being massively overprepared for. Who's this what? guy? That's a good question. He's just here. I am the Let me look into your eyes. It's been ages since I had a wank. <laughs> this will be going in the spank. Yeah, I just demoralized an entire character in a few seconds. No. I sure did. <laughs> oh, he's dead too, probably. Oh yeah, no, nope. he, he is. He is translucent. That slight fade effect gave me all the questions for answers. Okay. Let's just talk to this ghost here for a moment. Yeah, this has some interesting moments in it too. These little flashbacks. Yoken. It is the highest honor for which guardian might ask. Use my life, Lady Yoken. I don't like ghosties. <laughs> dynamic with each other is wonderful. It's true, this man has no dick. When, they, when they're locked up and the New York's going to hell and the mayor's like they're trying to explain all the paranormal goings on to the other guys in the holding cell. He's like, Ray, just pretend for a minute that I don't know about parallel dimensions and ghosts, that I didn't study theoretical physics. Or pay attention in school. I forget all what Bankman says. Yeah. But Ray's answer is like, you should have paid attention in class. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that movie. You gotta watch it. Yeah. Uh, like, your your top three movies, I've definitely not seen. Never seen Goodfellas. Yeah. Never seen Big Lebowski. Never seen Train Spotting. Nope. With young Obi Wan Kenobi addicted to heroin. Oh. Oh, we got some videos to watch. Then. Oh no. It's okay. He gets better in the end. He chooses life. Two asshole friends that basically follow him all the way to England to uh, sponge off him. And cops arrest them, and Spud gets some money in the end. All right. 
plot points to look forward to for you. That's a heavy fucking movie, too. Great! Now, when you say young Obi-Wan, you're talking about Ewan McGregor, right? Yeah. Okay. Because I did see a movie with him that I really like called I Love You, Philip Morris. Oh. That's a great movie. He was also in, uh... Hey, Frosca. Basically played a young Iggy Pop. Oh, right. In Velvet Goldmine. Which is like... What it, it's it's well, basically the story of Bowie told by people that hate Bowie. <laughs> so they made they made the guy into just like this pompous, you know, asshole music guy, the lead character, played by uh, Jonathan Rice Myers, I think. Isn't that Iggy Pop anyway? Oh no, wait, no, I'm thinking of Iggy Azalea. No, Iggy, and then Iggy was played by Ewan uh, McGregor, who shows his penis on stage. As you do. Well, he was he was doing the thing Iggy Pop used to do, which is like he's making a jack off motion but with some glitter uh-huh. on stage and someone's like, Wanker <laughs> Wanker <laughs> And he's like, She's got a TV, yeah <laughs> me And he's like dancing his pants fall down, he starts like humping the air. <laughs> Not humping the air, he's just shaking his dick. Okay. <laughs> this is the kind of protest music I like. <laughs> Hey, old man. <laughs> that was an interesting line read. Are the trials ahead? <laughs> Probably. Here too. Boom! Like Happy Fireworks Festival. Because, you know, there's nothing more happy than Xanarkand. You can ask for them. It's the happiest place on Earth. Let's play Blitzball. <laughs> that is... Come on, I'm waiting. In, t- in eight, this is the card game instead, and the one girl actually asks you when you like. You've gone to space. You're in a space station to meet her, an orbiting space station, and you can challenge her to cards. She's like, "You want to play cards now?" <laughs> Ooh, let's play Tetris. Bet nobody's ever made that joke before. Yeah, well, this temple is a bunch of dick anyway, so... <laughs> okay, so we can easily talk over this and not... I mean, I just, just enjoy the stupid complexity of it as well, but this is even uh, not as worse as, you know, the one we were in before that had the uh, the platforms and whatnot. Oh, yeah. It's, no, that's the worst one. But this one isn't great either, because now, like, you have to find what blocks make the spaces on the floor. Mm. And once you do, it's like, oh, the door's open. But then you, later you come back to get the, uh, like, the weapon to get um, anima uh-huh. for this temple. And instead of ma- matching all these, you have to match all the false ones, which are like the white squares oh, okay. to get to that. So they just did the second version of the gimmick, but this is basically what you need to do is just to open it and... Fantastic. Isn't it a great thing that this thing, this place still works after all this time? Yeah. Wouldn't it well, suck if you showed up and it was like, oh, can't complete the, the trials, can't complete the pilgrimage, but all this stuff is broken down. Well, that was... What temple was it that had the faith stolen from it? The Ooh. Temple of the Stolen Faith? No, that's the cavern. But no, that's that's why it's called that. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just kind of ditched it in there. Oh. It's like stealing a sarcophagus and just being like, eh, I'm taking this as far as I can go. That actually happened, too. <laughs> There's Did me- it conclude that way? What? Like, I, I, can't, I can't possibly smuggle this coffin in there. No, it definitely got smuggled all the way. I'm not entirely sure how to solve this puzzle. So you have to get just a version of the the what's up there. Oh, okay. So like I have the two reds taken care of. Now I need but if you get one that's not up there, it resets everything. Why are you, you supposed have, to know that? You you just find them. <laughs> it's trial and error. I mean, fortunately, once you do it, it you know it does it for all of them. Well, 
that's good at least, because that is, you're not kidding, this, this is a little bit bullshit. Yeah. Oh wait, I might have just lied. <laughs> yeah, you have to solve it for each of these. Great! And then, once you get these solved, you take these two little orbs out and put them in those pedestals in there. Okay. Push it in and that turns it on. Well, that one was the wrong one. And then there's a boss fight. Eh, <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Wrong! <laughs> You suck. You have your guide with a glossy picture in it. Doesn't <laughs> help me know where to stand to activate it. Brady Games. I don't know what the other day talking about old stuff from the internet. Okay. Collection of Tourette's guy. Oh man. The original. That's from a long time ago. Wow. Where's the paper towels? Wow. These, these fish sticks are hard as tits. <laughs> I'm not going to say my favorite one because it has a bad word in it. Aww. Who's that faggot with a tuba? <laughs> <laughs> That's our dad. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm calling you about your Colgate, the one with tartar control. <laughs> I tried it and it made me feel like a piece of shit. Oh, this is the P. Diddy version of that song. Not that Sting, piece of shit. <laughs> yes, he was playing a character. That makes it even funnier to me. Like, why is this supposed to ruin my good time? He's running around yelling Bob Saget. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I like watching the compilation videos where they just put in... Because for some reason, having the words up on screen as people say it makes it funnier, and I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> there was something else about the garbage man. I don't remember what it was. Also, fuck salt. <laughs> See you walk a mile in my shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, of course he was playing a character. They wouldn't let him... Oh my god! Oh no! Come on! Just, there's no mercy, no peace, no mercy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I gotta start over again! I'm gonna go to sleep with you, you know, I just. Uh, so we found my cat sleeping on top of the cabinets. Yeah, the moment I walk in here, that's where she was. That's, she does a lot. Like, like, she used to sleep under here, sleep under the bed, sleep just around, playing at the windows, but now she discovered she has the high ground. <laughs> like a tiger. Wrong, incorrect start over. I was watching the or, original Jungle Book. I love that one. With my one client. And I have a disagreement. Okay. I might have mentioned this already on the podcast, but I have a hard time believing that a panther, a bear, six wolves <laughs> can't take out one tiger. <laughs> but he's menacing. Well, like he's Sheriff Cullen. Well, oh, they have a human too, by the way. <laughs> the real game changer here. That's a child human. But. Um, excuse me, it's man cub? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Why do they make all, like, the monkeys racist? I. They knew what they were doing. It was the jazz club. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was. It was all the Negro jazz musicians. That smoke. Like, we used to sit around in circles and smoke grass. I wanna be a man right right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just turned into like an oscillating fan at points. And they're like that's why I asked that question too. It's like why is he the villain? Like, because he wants man's fire. And it's like, 
Alright, he just wants to move up his station in life then, pretty much. Yeah, no, he just wants to ascend. I am... I, I am the mayor of Funky Town, <laughs> of monkeys. But he literally was. Yeah. And it's like... Yeah, he just wants fire. He wants to get rid of Tiger himself. We're gonna have an animal farm situation going on in the jungle. <laughs> you know what? Jungle. Look out for Little Mermaid 3 coming in 2004. <laughs> the, these Disney DVDs oh, that we yeah. watch have all... Because we have one of those DV, little mini DVD players that if the remote was with it, it's gone now. Of course. So you only have the stop and play buttons at your disposal. So we're sitting through all the advertisements. Oh, good. And it's like, almost like the ending of this game, where someone's swimming to the surface, and it's like, Little Mermaid 3. I was like, I thought she was a human now. <laughs> and they go back to the, you have to go back to the sea? Did you know, uh, have you ever seen, um, Cinderella 3, A Stitch in Time? <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw the ad for that. Is that where the wicked stepmother, like, becomes a sorcery at her disposal? As yes, well? and also the... I'm undoing your your happy future because I'm a poignant evil bitch. And That's the, her only motivation. And the prince jumps out a window because he's goofy as shit in that one. 